welcome your Star Wars Weekend's host, the man with the freakish vocal range and free first names, James Arnold Taylor.
you're trying to decide what food you're going to get and who's going to decorate it, and, yep. you know, where you're going to have it and so forth. And it's, you know, it's mostly so we can maximize your eventual enjoyment of the picture. And we want you to see it at the movies, not on the internet. Yeah. And so it's very important. out there, there are big out there that are going to try and show you every creature and, and God knows they'll probably try and leak the script and, and, and put it online. So no. if I were you, I'd do that. I don't know about you, I've seen trailers where you go, hi, I, practice, I think I've seen the whole movie. You, know? <laughs> you want some surprises, that's all. Okay, well, okay. we're done with that. We're done with that. Thank you, though. Thank you so much. Now, let's go back. And I didn't grow my beard fast enough. I shaved, the last day I shaved was the day after the table read, a, April 29th. Yeah. And, and, and it's pathetic. This, this, this is six weeks. I've got to get going, man. That is a nice little one. All right. So well, let's go back to the beginning of your Star Wars event. Yes, yes. Okay. And tell us about the audition process for this. Did you even know the name of the movie? What was, what, how did it all begin for you? I had a friend, uh, I had just done a series called The Texas Wheelers for Mary Tyler Moore Productions, and it was canceled. I was sort of depressed about that, and my friend Robert England, who was oh, yeah. Freddie and Cooper, yeah. yeah. he goes, have you been out to that George Lucas movie? And I said, what is it? Because I knew from American Graffiti. He said, I think it's like Flash Gordon or something. You <laughs> <laughs> don't get to see the script, but... Um, it's, it's all set in space and everything, and I said, are you up for it? He said, I didn't get it. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> so he wouldn't tell me about it until he was sure that he had been <laughs> passed over. So that's so you know, you know, like, the actors are like that. Actors are like that. But when I think about it, I think Robert must have been up for the Han Solo character. I don't know, yeah. But I went, I went, I got, told my agent, I said, I really want to go out on this thing. And, uh, I think when I think they called it the Star Wars, but uh, it was a, what they call a cattle call, which means a room just filled with actors, and it was twofold. Brian De Palma was seeing people for Carrie, the Stephen King horror film, yeah. and George was seeing people for Star Wars. In the same space. In the same space. So when you went in at a table with George and, and Brian, and George never spoke. It was Brian that did all the talking. I didn't know. I thought maybe George was Brian's assistant. You know? Because I didn't know what he looked like. Yeah. And basically, they just talked to you. You know, where are you from? And I said, well, I'm in the middle of seven children. My dad was in the Navy. And, you know, we just talked for about five minutes. And basically, what you're doing is you're, you're showing them you're either checked on a list of let's see him again, or you're crossed off. Because you don't do any performing or anything, you just talk a little bit, and it's next, next, next. And how did you do? Well, I was told that you know, Robin said that, uh, and my agent said one of the characters is a farm boy, so he's probably not really sophisticated. He's probably not all that bright. <laughs> you know, I remember I was born to play. Uh, you know. He should probably look freshly punched, you know, <laughs> slightly bewildered. Uh, but you know, so you try and go in and, and, and be genuine and just be who you are, but you, you have no idea of what you're looking for. And then months later, maybe yeah. six weeks later, I got a, a six-page scene in the mail. Yeah. And that was the first time I'd seen any material. And I went in and I did a video taped uh, uh, Screen test, test yeah. with Harrison. And I got really excited because I knew Harrison Ford. Harrison, Harrison Ford, yeah. Oh, come on! Uh, <laughs> and I knew him from American Graffiti. Yeah, he was pretty great. Now look at this. See, I love the, the all these great candid shots. You all look like you're having so much fun. Right. <laughs> Oh, look, at Fire Sale. That was the movie that came out the same summer as us from um, uh, Alan Arkin directed that, and uh, I later worked with Alan, he directed me off-Broadway in the production of Brute Service. And he's still mad at Star Wars, because he's convinced that it killed Fire Stick. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing to me, 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 you're doing
<laughs> would have been great. No, but uh, so we went in. I read this the screen screen test. Yeah. And I'm thinking, is I, is this like serious or is it parody? It seemed to me like it could be like Mel Brooks or something. Do you remember some of the lines? Yeah. Here, here's the thing. Now I've done this before. So bear with me if you've done this before. But there's a line that was in the screen test that's not in the movie. And I, all these years later, a little 163 years later, I still remember this line because it was we're in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, and there was no Wookiee. It was just on Solo, and he was like, "Hey, kid, you know, I did my part." No, no, no. I'm just trying to approximate sort of that minimalist, low energy. <laughs> It's like he's hypnotizing you at the same time as you're doing my job. Uh, you know, so, you know, you know, so, uh, you know, so, and my, but anyway, he was saying that we're turning back. And I said, and my, my character says to him, but we can't turn back. Fear is their greatest defense. I doubt if the actual security there is any greater than it was on Aquilar or Salus. And what there is is more widely directed towards a large scale assault. And I'm like, who talks like this? <laughs> Can you diagram that sentence? Yeah. Let's let's break it down. Fear is their greatest defense, meaning whatever that, because he says, that's no moon, that's a space station. That's why he wants to turn around. And, and regarding that space station, I say, but fear is their greatest defense. I doubt if the actual security there is any greater than it was on Atwell or Sullivan, two mega names of little asteroids, that I guess. Sure. And what there is is most likely directed towards a large scale assault. In other words, we're small enough in the Millennium Falcon to slip in because they're looking for big armadas. Yep. So it, it made sense when I broke it down. Hmm. But I remember saying to George, I said, this is like kind of in fun or, and he, you know, he was like, well, um, well, let's just do it we'll talk about it. <laughs> Which I later learned from experience when George says that. It means, let's do it now and never talk about it. <laughs> he doesn't like that. He, I think one of the reasons he is successful in what he does is he casts people that are so close to what he wants that he doesn't have to go in there and do major, you know... He gets the natural energy that they have. Exactly. And so, I mean, I would be like on the Death Star and he'd say, wait a second. She might be picking up on the princess kind of, you know, dancing back and forth with Han Solo, or shouldn't I notice the, the robots are making wisecracks and so forth? <laughs> he goes, you know, well, it's just... And I said another thing, what, the pronunciation. Is it Leia or Leah? Is it Han or Han? Is it Chewbacca or Chewbacca? And he goes, huh? I don't care, just say Leia. <laughs> <laughs> You mean there's no right way to say these things? Uh, well, it's regional. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we did that in Clone Wars quite a bit, where we would all say it, and he, he let us all say it differently because he thought that that's more real. Yeah, it is. It really is, you know? I know, because when people say Nevada, people say Nevada. So, uh, you know, it's like, basically, it's don't sweat the small stuff. So, now, getting back to all this great chemistry that you guys had, I mean, we do have some, some great shots. Was it, was it always fun on set? I mean, it's always, from what I see, from what I hear from y'all, it seems like you guys really did have a good time. Look at that! We're going into space! I can't remember laughing as much on anything really? as, as, as this movie. I mean, it was just wicked fun. I mean, we had to take it seriously. We had to really sell it in terms of like, if you don't believe it, then nobody's going to believe it. Yeah. But just to get it all out of our system, we goof on it when when the cameras weren't rolling. And I mean, I was reminded of that because I saw this documentary footage of us uh, uh, making our way back to the Million Falcon when, when Alec Guinness gets cut down. Yeah. And, it, and that's a really traumatic moment for me. But, like I said, it was like putting put, put out on the business playground with all you know, props, your own toy robots and laser guns. I mean, how could you not have fun? Yeah. If you can't have fun doing that, then you're in the wrong movie. And I do remember the swing across, you just had a picture up of, yeah. of Carrie and I. I was looking forward to that all week long. I said, two days, doing the swing across, doing the swing across, and then you know, tomorrow. 
And we were both in harnesses, the way you would, you know, be harnessed up to Peter Pan. Sure. So we were all on wires, and then they had our two harnesses linked together, carrying them. Yeah. And so we're ready to go, there we are. And uh, what I didn't realize was that they had at least four cameras going, in my memory, maybe three. I'm thinking it's four. And normally in the movies you do it over and over, and you might spend all day doing that. We swung across. <laughs> <laughs> you were that good. You were just like that once, and they go, camera, it's good, camera, shoot, it's good. All right, moving on. That's it. What? What a chip! That's what I'm talking about. I said, oh, that is so. And so I, I did um, a little mini tantrum, and they said, all right, we'll get Terry on the harness. If Mark wants to fly, we'll fly. <laughs> so they you know, so they threw me all over. <laughs> <laughs> now speaking of all these wonderful people that you worked with, let's do it. Let's. I think it's time for a Star Wars Weekend double take. Don't you think? Yeah, yep, let's do it. It's a Star Wars Weekend's double take. It's me. All right. So Mark, let's let's uh, for time's sake, let's talk the cast for a bit. I'm going to give you a name, and you give me a sentence or a word. Okay. So one okay. sentence or a word per person to, to sum them up and your time with them. Okay? okay. Here we go. First one, the word. Alec Gibbs. Ultimate gentleman and ultimate actor. I just adored Alec. He had a wonderful sense of humor. He loved... I mean, of all things, you know, I'd be asking about the Lavender Hill Mob or the Lady Hill. I want to talk about the oil. I said, we want to hear about a soap opera and a dog food commercial. <laughs> I, mean, I had done nothing that he would have seen. But he loved my lack of pretense. He loved the fact that he loved American humor. Yeah. And uh, I remember one time his wife was sketching a mosque when we were in Tunisia. And this was taboo uh, to, to the, the religion there. And uh, to, uh, a local official realized what she was doing, he just, how you doing know what she was doing? He grabbed the paper and tore it up, and Lady Guinness was startled, and so was Alec, and he turned to me, he said, who was that? I said, I had no idea, unless it was a local art critic. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, he loved that, yeah. because it was unexpected. I knew I could do this with him. And, and that was the longest sentence I've ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> Failed as a cat's way. So, I'm hard to That's what you're going to get from now on. Here we go. Uh, Harrison Ford. Nice. Terry <laughs> <laughs> Fisher. Terry Fisher. Very nice. <laughs> Can you give us more than two words? Come on. Well, as you all know, Terry is just wickedly funny. I mean, yeah. uh, an incredible wit, and uh, you know, her mother is just a legend in, in cinema history. Yep. Uh, For those of you that don't know, Debbie Reynolds. Debbie Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah. Rain, yeah. Than that. Yeah. Oh, really a wonderful actress. I don't think she gets the credit she deserves because she sings and dances, you yeah. know, and they somehow think that that makes her less of an actress. But if you see her in How the West Was Won, or that's the recent thing where she played Liberace's mother. Pretty great, yeah. I mean, I didn't even recognize her. Yeah. She was a wonderful actress. She okay. loves a lot. Of, I love a lot. Harrison is also very funny. He's yeah. very, very witty. And uh, I wish he would do more comedies. Yeah. Well, they the Widowmaker, you know. <laughs> if you get time with him, uh, it's pretty funny. In the near future, if you get time with him, you can do the first one. If you get time with him any time in the near future, you can encourage him to do some comedies. Um, uh, really? Yeah. Okay. Irving Kershner. Really? And, and really in tune with the mystical aspects of, see now where George really didn't want to talk about things? Yeah. Kirshner was an actor's director. He really loved talking about motivation and backstory and, uh, well there he is. Right there. As you say things, it comes out right there. It's, it's amazing. It's Disney magic. I better not right. talk about my honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I got a great show for you tonight. Uh, Frank Hall. Frank Oz. Oh, Frank. Uh, 
where I grew up, we just so enamored of the Muppets. I mean, even before the Muppet Show, you know, they say, hey, Mark, uh, the Muppets should be on Ed Sullivan this Sunday, and, you know. Uh, so I was a huge, huge, huge fan. Yeah. And he couldn't be nicer. Again, he's a wonderful director, as he's shown uh, yeah. uh, all over the years. But uh, uh, so personable, and that's Wendy. Yeah. You know, it was very lonely on the set because they were all underground. I had a little earpiece, much like this one I have on today. And if I turned in a certain direction, I'd pick up radio waves. <laughs> so I'd just be watching Frank with, oh, many years I'm not And all of a sudden, it <laughs> I go, I need the Rolling Stones. Oh, there he is. I said to, to actually, I sort of laughed. You know, right? And Yoda's face, didn't I? You do a pretty good Yoda. I think. Well, you know what happened is we all started doing Yoda. Everybody, you know, then we'd break for lunch and the blue guy would say, To the commissary, you are going <laughs> So everybody's talking backwards and talking like Yoda. And uh, Frank eventually said, you know, please, we, it was posted on the on the on the all board. Please stop doing Yoda because Frank's starting to do your version. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have to stop that. But you know, they weren't really forthcoming in terms of letting me put the puppet on. I went up into Stuart Freeborn's uh, workshop when they were whipping up the phone to make Yoda. We went down on Saturdays when we weren't shooting and worked all day with Frank and uh, I just loved him. I mean, from the minute I set, set eyes on that Yoda, I said, oh, he, he, it just works so totally for me. I well, just, here's the thing, and, and we had one other person that I was going to give a name for, which we'll get back to, but your performance with Yoda, I think, is really what made us all believe him. And believe in Yoda. It's like oh, oh. Because it's just the two of you. There was never a doubt that Yoda was alive. I mean, but it seemed that the two of you had this special bond. You know, and I held my breath and kept my fingers crossed because I said, if we get one critic that mentions, even in a positive way, that Hamill works well with puppets, I said, we're dead. Um, and Frank, I mean, that's sort of an insider. I mean, James being an actor himself, he would understand. But Frank actually said to me, you know, <laughs> did it do something with Sandy? You were scratching it. It's not even getting this great sound. It used to this facial for it. But Frank said to me, he said, look, you know, because I said to him, I, I tried working that puppet. It wasn't easy. I mean, yeah, the mechanical ears and the, somebody was working the eyes, but in terms of just the way he manipulated the mouth and the way he could make the body sag and tilt the head when he was listening to me, because I would do it in the mirror, and of course, you know, with his decades of experience, I, it made me really appreciate what he brought to the performance. And I was talking to him one time, I said, you know, uh, thank goodness that they, because they toyed with the idea of making it a little person in a, oh, really? in a mask. And George at one point said, how about a monkey with a head on it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, well, you remember a band that just dressed up an elephant, but he only had to be in a couple of, you know, he didn't have to really carry scenes. <laughs> well, yeah, but I've worked with some pretty uncouth actors, but never uh, a spider monkey in a mask. That sounds like a recipe for a disaster. <laughs> Frank actually said to me, and I, that's one of my fondest and most proud moments, he said, if you didn't believe, no one would have believed. And he, he credited me much too generously with being a large percentage of how that thing worked. And I don't agree with him because, like I say, I didn't have to pretend to believe. I believed. You know, I just thought he was, from the moment, and even before he was, and by the way, he was always breaking down to the point where wherever you see Luke without Yoda, or if you see over Yoda's shoulder onto Luke, it's the dummy Yoda. Because they run the main one up to Stewart's uh, office and or, or workshop and work on him. So most of the time, he was a piece of tape on a stick going, I can, I can be a Jedi. You know, like right there. There you go. What's <laughs> up? But I can. I'm telling you, I can be a Jedi. <laughs>
That's just how he acted on the set. It's bringing, it's bringing back memories. Good, you're yeah. Fantastic stuff, though. It really is. Now, do you remember the first scene you, you shot? Do you remember that? It's for the very, of all? Of all of them. Do you remember that? Yes. The very first shot in the movie is me coming out of that igloo-type dwelling yeah. towards to buy the robots, and then I hear Aunt Beru, Lou, and I, you know, what's so funny was when I went over to that uh, crater and looked down, it was only this deep. When they did the reverse over my shoulder, it was miles away, 50, 100 miles away at a real hotel, and that was the lobby of a hotel. Yeah. So that's the magic of movies, You're, you pretend. So as I was walking out of that little igloo house, they said, you walk about 10 feet, and then react like someone's calling you. Because Sheila Frazier, who played Aunt Bruce, she wasn't even on set that day. Uh, so who called you? Was it, was it George? Luke? No, no, he didn't like doing that. He didn't like doing that. He says, oh, you just walk around, I don't know, like, walk to around there, and then pretend like uh, Aunt Bruce was calling you. So I knew the script was Luke, Luke. So I started walking around, you know, then you just do it. You do it's it. all make believe. I mean, I've been doing this like I've been shooting the same way. I mean, we used to play Zorro in the backyard yeah. or Robin Hood, or we go see a James Bond movie, and for days after we like, going around, I was like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> you know, sneaking around corners. You know, still weird. I was a weird kid, you know. Uh, I had sessions. We were doing. I've been doing the same way with voices. I remember the first yeah. time I ever saw Dracula. Yeah. I want to know what looks like this. Why does he talk like that? You know, See, I mean, now this gets me on. You're actually quite the impressionist. We've done quite a few voiceover uh, shows together. And I remember you've already done Little Harrison, but there was a show we did where we were doing voice matches. I was doing like Martin Scorsese, and you were doing Harrison Ford. <laughs> you know who does great is uh, I did Stuart Little, and Michael J. Fox did do the series. Your Michael J. Fox is spot on. Oh, well, thank you. Well, wait a second, Doc. Whoa, you mean so much? <laughs> Do you mind taking some questions from Twitter and all. Instagram and all of those? Can we do a little social media madness here, guys? Your favorite scene. One of the scenes I kept looking forward to because I thought it would pop when I read the script. In a science fiction or fantasy movie, everybody's waiting for the monster. Now, you yeah. saw the Tuscan Raiders and the Jawas to a certain extent. But I said, when we walk into that cantina and it's just nothing but wall to wall monsters, that really appealed to me. And so I was really, really looking forward to that one. But I already talked about how much I love the swing across. Yeah. I love the, you know, the trash compactor. I mean, so many of these. <laughs> Elements in the movie were right out of the kind of things that I loved when I was a kid. Tarzan yeah. movies and you know swashbuckler pirate movies, cowboy movies, and it, it just seemed like a dream come true. I mean, I was a kid that read Famous Monsters magazine, yeah. and built all the Aurora monster kits. Yeah. So I, mean, I was the one that would really get it. Hey, you guys, our faces are mad from the back of cereal boxes. I can't believe it. And Harrison was like, I didn't get it. This is the cereal box. This is it, you I had to be an athlete to become a bubblegum card. No. Uh, You're I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a good athlete, but I, 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 made, it, I made it onto a bubblegum card. You're so proud. More than that, 
Yeah, you've done pretty good, my friend. Okay, let's 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 get another one of these here. All right, all right. What do we got? Uh, okay, Raymond is asking. While filling the wampa seeds on off, how long did you actually have to hang upside down? Oh gosh, it was days on days. What happened was we shot it like one or two days main unit. Yeah. And then Kirshner and everybody moved on, and they, that became a second unit shot. Gary Kurtz did a day, Robert Watts did a day, I think Norman Reynolds did two days. And, and they, they left you hanging the whole well, time. Well, that's a joke. They go, okay, that's a break for lunch. Everybody would walk off. <laughs> but uh, it's a wonderful way to lose weight, by the way. <laughs> because not only do you sort of lose your appetite hanging upside down, but uh, you don't want to disgrace yourself in any manner, shape, or form. So you really eat like oatmeal and you know, yeah. you really watch what you eat. And people would come and lift you halfway so the that the blood wouldn't completely rush to your head. But it just went on and on and on and on. And talk about flying. It's the same guy that flew us across when we were with the princess, but he had me in a harness and I was upside down and that was what they call, we call it styrofoam over there, they call it polystyrene. Polystyrene. There you go. And uh, his name was Darren. But he had these marks on, you know, because I couldn't see him. He was somewhere behind the set. And he would preset where I was and where to drop me when I got the lightsaber and cut the slide tight down so I wouldn't crash myself. I just had to tuck my chin and take the brunt on my shoulders. Well, one day, I apparently he had a little brandy at lunch. And he mixed up his marks. And he started, when, after one of the takes where I was down, he started bringing me up. And he didn't stop. I started breaking through the oh, polish star. And I was screaming, Derek, stop! Stop! That's enough! <laughs> and it's snowing all this polystyrene. And uh, yeah, I guess you had to be there. But, <laughs> you know, it was exciting. We had John Ratzenberger here last week. Anybody? Yeah. And you know, he was in Empire Strikes Back. Now, I don't know if you are aware that he was in a scene with you that was cut out. Have you seen this? I have not seen it. We just uncovered this. So let's just take a look at this. Oh, boy. You guys Perhaps with a cyanide pie in the face, or an 
sun in the movie cushion, carefully placed in the back of the Placed in the role by Troy Baker. Troy Baker, very good. Troy, yeah, he's on. I did a show called Regular Show. It's on uh, Cartoon Network. Anybody know that? Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's on Regular Show. Uh, yeah, you do that very kind of flip, but you're one of the most talented voice actors out there, and we all are always so privileged when you come in. So. You know, a whole second kind of career. Yeah, you know what I what was great about the voiceover people? Because I didn't really get into it until the early 90s. I did something when I was a teenager. I did the animated version of By Dream and Genie in the Larry Haggard role. How did he cut that out? You're going right back in the bottle. Uh, but, and Julie Porter was, was Genie doing an incredible bar read. And I, I worked with Larry Haggard, and when I told him that, I said, you know, I can't do you, but. I, I played your part in the, the cartoon version. Now, that would have been like 72 or 3. Okay. And then I didn't work again in voiceover. Uh, by the time I did it again, it was Joker. And yeah. I didn't know about voiceover uh, agents. Oh, really? Specialized yeah. just in that. Because I got Genie through my theatrical agent. But well, I, the reason I'm bringing this up is when I went to do my first voiceover jobs, mm -hmm. I knew who Rob Paulson was, I knew who Jeff Bennett was, I knew who Chess McNeil, Maurice LaMarche. Now let me explain to them. Frank Rob Wells Paulson and Maurice LaMarche are Pinky in the Brain. Anybody know Pinky in the Brain? Yeah. Rob Paulson is from the Animaniacs. Well, they're all from the Animaniacs. Yeah. Chess McNeil. I mean, these are five giants of voiceover. Yeah. I would, I would, first of all, I'm a huge animation fan. I've been all my life, and I would take these things on Saturday morning. I'd watch with the boys, and my daughter was, they were going up. But I would freeze frame on the end credits, and because I wanted to know who played all these characters. Have you ever tried to read end credits without a freeze frame? <laughs> <laughs> There's a game, you can't see anybody. Yeah. So what I think they were flattered that I knew who they were. I mean, I knew who you were before I met you. So come uh, <laughs> <laughs> on, Mark. Come on. But no, it's true. I still remember seeing that uh, episode of the Walt Disney Show where they they showed. Uh, Clarence Nash doing Donald Duck. <laughs> it was the first time, or maybe six or seven, where I go, oh, wait a minute, yeah. There are actors that go in and and voice cartoons. That's right. Know. And now I'm going to do a shameless plug for my show. Yeah, because if you want to know more about that, you can come back and see Obi-Wan Beyond later. <laughs> but I do show. <laughs> hey, uh, honestly, though, uh, we really appreciate that you are such a lover of voice acting, but you are a tremendous voice actor. And I just, I thank you. Because the first project we ever worked on, I played the kid version, and you played like, you did this great, like, old, man, it was just a narration you were narrating. So we played the same character. Is that right? Yeah, it was many, many years ago. On a, on a, on a, on a, I think it was called um, Arrow Troopers? Arrow, Arrow, Arrow Trooper. It was an Arrow Troopers, yeah. So that was fun. So we played the same role. That was my first time working well, with Well, you know, I finally, after all those years of uh, being asked, I said, okay, I'll do a. A Clone Wars, and so I did it in one episode. One episode. Yeah, and they said, don't tweet or don't talk about it or don't mention it. And I said, oh, okay. Three years later, I mean, it's been on, it's gone. It's yeah, amazing. it was on Netflix, it's in season six, <laughs> and, and you are fantastic in it. Was it? Was it never on Cartoon Network? It was not on Cartoon Network, it is on, on Netflix. You can see it now. And you play Darth, Darth Bane. Bane. Yes. <laughs> and the reason I said it is when they said, well, was that him? That's him. Because they said, uh, I yeah. said, what do you want me to do? I said, I kind of want to make it special, so find something that's fun. And uh, they had me at Darth. Yeah. Because <laughs> I thought, Darth, anybody's got to be interesting. We wanted you on that show for so many years, and it was fantastic that you actually got to play that. And Tom Kane did. Yeah, yeah, because Tom Kane is your Hey, you know, we are looking at doing something here that I love to do. It's time that we take you inside the Akbar studio. Oh. <laughs> it's a trap! Woo! So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to ask you uh, seven questions. Okay. And if you can just give me the answers here, uh, best you can. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see how much we all learn about you and Star Wars, okay? Question number one. What is your favorite Star Wars film? It's 
like asking me, who's your favorite child? <laughs> I love them all for different reasons, but if you really press me, I have to say Empire. Only because... <laughs> only, only because it asks so much more of the audience. It's much more cerebral, it's got elements that are really scary, that it's, it doesn't end happily, Yoda's introduced. It's just a much more textured, interesting film, but I could make arguments for Jedi and, and the original oh, as well. That's good, that's good. Okay. I love all my children. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we have two other days of this, so you can answer differently. So there you go. Oh, yeah, I'll switch answers tomorrow. <laughs> what Star Wars sound do you love? I love any language that you don't understand, whether it's the Jawas, <laughs> yeah, or the, or the, what do they call the sand people, yeah. uh, ooh, 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 ooh. there you go, uh, uh, <laughs> the Ewoks, any, or R2, it's, it's a symphony of emotions, and yet we have no idea what he's saying exactly, and I think that, again, is engaging your, uh, your, your imagination and you're filling in what he's saying and it's a three PS. So okay. And you gave us a little hint here. What Star Wars sound do you not love? Okay. This is a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> when I read the script for what happened in the Wampa Cave, I said, well, wait a second. They didn't describe what happens in the film. They said with a swipe of the lightsaber he he you know uh, makes the creature draw back. Sure, of course. I don't even know if they called it a Wampa. You know, a lot of times they wouldn't name these things until they made them into toys. We yeah. <laughs> called it a medical droid and didn't know until after Kenner got his hands on it that it was IG-88. Yeah. Yeah. So we call it the dustbin robot, the medical droid, sure. uh, the ice creature, whatever it was. And I remember saying to them, I said, well, wait a sec, because the camera was here and all I had to do was this as a lightsaber. Yeah. And, and I said, no, wait a minute, guys. This thing's just like a hungry bear. He's not evil. So I'm just like nicking his fur, right? I'm just scaring him a little, just giving him a little sting, like with a, with a fly swatter. And then, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. You know, Luke would get like, said, Luke loves animals. I mean, I'm Mark loves animals, too. And I don't want to do anything that would be cruel or anything. Oh, don't worry about it. Cut to me in the theater a year and a half later. Not only do I cut his arm off, it comes down in slow motion, boom, and hits the deck. Yeah. So the sound that he makes when I cut his arm off okay. is just, I, again, I'm still so Okay. Because <laughs> they tricked me. They tricked me. I specifically asked. I'm not going to hurt him, right? I'm just going to nick him. Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Question number four. What is your favorite Star Wars word? Wookie. <laughs> Excellent. What character besides your own would you have liked to have been? Oh, you got some time on your hands? <laughs> I don't know who's playing this Darth Vader guy, but you know, like, ah. And I also thought of the humans. Who wouldn't want to be Han Solo? He's wise crack, and hey, he's mocking the Force. You believe in that Force garbage? I mean, he was the modern voice of cynicism, yeah. which I think was a great release for the audience. They were able to accept a lot of the more corny elements of the movie because there was a surrogate making fun of everything for them. Yes. I think that was very clever. Very so cool. everybody wanted to be Harrison. I did, I know. On that note, what character would you not like to be? Thank well, you. Princess Leia is kind of a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe in my slimmer days I could have pulled it off. <laughs> okay, and final question. Mark Hamill, is there anything you would like to say to your fans? Listen, guys. Over the years, we have been just, I mean, I, for sure, have been so moved at the amount of support and affection that you've displayed is to the point where I don't even think of you as fans, you're more like family. Uh, if, you know, I, 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 I don't want to get too sentimental here, you know, because I'll get all choked up, but uh, we are just astonished at the kind of, I call you UPFs, the ultra pot passionate fans. And if it weren't for you, I mean, we wouldn't be here. They certainly wouldn't be doing episode seven. Uh, like I say, I mean, I, even to this day, I'm backstage going, is the, is the theater filled? You know, <laughs> the first thing I saw were three empty seats. I said, oh, no. <laughs>
quite popular, it's taking a nosedive, but really, I can't thank you enough for, for all the support uh, over the years, and as I said before, Thank <laughs> you.